Luisa, the CIS program chair. We have, we have some of our faculty here. We have our operations manager, who is Rubina Danielova from CSC. Uh, you know, probably Armine, who has been in touch with you. And we also uh, have, I think at some point I saw Karin, I, I don't see her now, right? but hi. <laughs> she is here from the admissions office in case you guys uh, have questions regarding admissions. So she will be, uh, she will be answering those. So the way that we're gonna start this is, um, I would like to tell you a little bit about the program, what it's about, what you should be expecting, especially if you come from different backgrounds than uh, uh, CS. And then we will go into a Q and A, &A what kind of questions you have, we'll try to get that answered. If it's about admissions, I know we'll uh, step in for that one. But before I actually get started, I'd like to know a little bit about uh, you, what kind of a background you have so that uh, we can try to make this more tailored uh, for you guys. So can we uh, have you guys tell me a little bit about yourselves? We go one by one maybe, uh, what your background is, what you have studied, or if you're working, if you've done any work in the field of CS or you come from a completely different background. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be good. So let me, how about I just name, uh, I go through the list of the names that I have and then you guys, uh, you guys present yourselves a little bit. So the first one on the list that I see is Sato. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so to introduce myself, basically, uh, I'm a fourth year uh, student at the Polytechnic University in the mm -hmm. field of software engineering. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. Um, Hello. Yes, we got you. Thank you very much. Uh, Charlotte. I, I actually have problems hearing you. Can I, can I try to say it again or? We heard you okay. At least I heard you okay. I don't know everyone else. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. Uh, so if you, if you heard, uh, I'm, I'm a fourth year student in the software engineering field in the Polytechnic University. Uh, okay, thanks very much. Um, Hello again. Charlotte. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Charlotte. Uh, I graduated from AUA, the business department, and I'm data specialist now. Okay, sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Karine. Okay, maybe Karine is not around. Uh, next we have uh, Narod, Did I, am I pronouncing that right? Yes, Narod. Um, I am a fourth year student at uh, Yemen State University, Faculty of Informatics and Biomatics. I am a software engineer. Okay, sounds great. Nice to meet you. Hermine. Hi, uh, I'm Hermine, and I have graduated from AA with a with from a business department. And now uh, I'm working uh, as a data scientist. Wonderful, nice to meet you as well, Karine. Uh, how go? You're um, at least looking at last time, you seem to be familiar. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Hi, I'm currently a junior year, at, as you know. Um, I want to learn more about the master's degree at AUA, so I want to continue my major in this field. So I'm pretty much having questions regarding the admissions. So, yeah. Good okay. to see you. Stick around for that then. Um, Ani. Okay, uh, we'll come back to Ani later. Ma is it Mary or is it Mary? Mary, hi. Uh, hi. I have graduated the Iran State University Faculty of Informatics and Applied Mathematics. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and last but not least, we have uh, Shaike. Hello, everyone. Hi, do you listen to me? Uh, I'm Shake. My uh, first uh, profession, uh, I'm a musician. And, but now uh, my work is uh, I'm doing web, web programming. I, I could not quite hear you very well at the beginning, Shake. You said your first profession is a musician. Musician. Ah, yeah. Wonderful. Nice. Uh, to not the first. 
in our program who is a musician, by the way, just so you know. And I wonder, uh, can I uh, go on UA? Yes, we're gonna, this is precisely why I wanted to know what background you come from so that we can uh, uh, talk about specifically, you know, what pro kind of program you're looking at when you come to CIS, okay? Okay, thank you. So let me introduce you to the program a little bit and then I'll talk about the details may regarding to all of you. So the program that we're looking at for the CIS, it's a 48 degree program. Uh, each course is a designated number of degrees uh, that we teach. So mostly the graduate courses that we teach are three credit courses. So a 48 credit program uh, ends up being 16 courses, right? So some of those courses are core courses. In other words, they are mandatory. You have to take them. Some of those courses are concentration courses. So for example, uh, the concentrations could be specifically in the field of computer science, or it could be in the field of data science, or it could be general mixed, the two together. Um, so, and then we also have a couple of courses which are what we call free electives. Free electives can be computer science courses from your program, from the CIS program, or they could be from a different program. For example, we have another master's program in the same faculty, which is ISM. It could be courses from there. It could be courses from the business faculty and so on, just as long as they're graduate courses. So the core courses, like I said, they're mandatory for you to take them. The concentration courses and the free electives, these are courses that you get to choose. So among uh, all the courses that are being offered every semester, you get to choose which course you want to take. Uh, if you've decided, for example, to go in the concentration of data science, then you pick courses that are in the field of data science, courses like uh, bioinformatics or uh, data visualization or artificial intelligence, for example, right? And if you want to go into, for example, CS concentration, you would pick things like, for example, cybersecurity or operating systems and so on. So the 16 courses comprise into a two-year program. So this assumes, of course, this program assumes you come with a computer science background. So for anyone coming from, so how about this one specifically for you, anyone coming from AUA with a CS background, they can directly go into this program uh, without uh, doing anything extra. So they just come in, they start their coursework right away, whatever courses they take, it starts counting towards their degree. So anyone, there were a few of you who said you were coming from uh, the state university or coming from Polytechnic University with a software engineering background or a, a IT background and so on, right? CS background. So for those of you who are coming from such a program, you can go into this program directly as well, except there are some um, waiver examinations that you have to give uh, in order for us to make sure that you have all the background that is necessary for you to take uh, the courses that are being offered. I'll talk about a little bit about those examinations. Um, for others, for example, Shaki, I believe it was, who's you know coming from a completely different background like music, uh, then you would have to start this program uh, as a non-degree student. So I'll, talk, I'll leave that at the very end. Did she leave the call? I can't see her. But in any case, I'll leave that at the very end and we can talk about that uh, more specifically how that is being handled. So for anyone else coming from, for example, there are a couple of you coming from a business background. So this is, yeah, we're assuming then during your business background, you've done higher end math mathematics. So you are familiar with mathematical courses, you have a mathematical background. As a result, what we need to do for you specifically is to fill in the fundamentals of computer science, the undergraduate level computer science, so that you will be ready to take the master's level courses, right? So in the way that we do this is what we, uh, what we call is what we have bridge courses. So these are fundamental undergraduate uh, courses, there are six of them. More precisely, if you want to take this down more precisely, probability and statistics, discrete mathematics, uh, introduction to object oriented programming, data structures, introduction to algorithms, and computer organization. So these are six courses that you have to pass in order for you to be able to take some other graduate level courses, which have these courses as a prerequisite. So let me give you an example. For example, one of the um, core courses, one of the mandatory courses that is necessary for you to take 
part of the CIS program in order to graduate is called advanced topics and algorithms. In order for you to be able to take advanced topics and algorithms, that course, that course has a prerequisite. The prerequisite for that is an undergraduate course, Introduction to Algorithms. The prerequisite for Introduction to Algorithms is data structures. The prerequisite for data structures is Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming, right? So in order to take that advanced algorithms, there's a sequence that comes before it, which you must have completed, or you must show that you have the knowledge in. So anyone that's coming from a non-CS background, it's, uh, in other words, anyone who has not taken such courses during their undergraduate studies, it is required of you to take these courses, these six courses. So as a result, what your program ends up being for you is the 48 credit that's mandatory for you to get your credit, plus these six bridge courses. So essentially, you're looking at studying more than two years. So maybe two and a half, you, you, should, you can do it in two and a half years, maybe longer than that, depending what pace you choose. So that's for anyone that's coming from a non-CS background. Anyone who is coming from a CS background outside of AUA, then for, for example, those of you who are coming from Polytechnic University, from the State University, um, then you, uh, you have the choice of either taking those courses to show that you have the knowledge you passing those courses, or you can actually write examinations in those courses, right? So for example, if you've done data structures in your algorithm, in your undergraduate studies, you come, you write the examination for data structures, you pass that and we say, great, wonderful. Now you can take advanced object-oriented programming, for example, which is another core course for you, right? So uh, that choice is up to you. However, if you don't pass the core, uh, if you don't pass that examination, that means you either can attempt it again the next time around, one semester later maybe, when the course is being offered again, or you can take the course, that's up to you. Um, for again, anyone coming from uh, AUA, from the CIA, uh, from CS, then you can directly go into the program because you have already taken those courses. You, uh, if you have a degree, that means you have already passed those courses. So this is roughly the program. Before I go into any other details, do you have any questions regarding this? Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. So we need to take these bridge courses during the first semester and uh, the remaining two years, the core courses, right? That uh, you know? No, there's really no sequence. Let me give you an example. For example, there are courses, uh, there are core courses that do not have a prerequisite. For example, one of the core courses is software project management. So let's say, let's say you get admitted and you're starting your program from the fall. Yeah, fall 2021. Um, so in fall 2021, let's say you have software project management, which is a core course that is being offered. It has no prerequisite. You can take that course. You can take that course. It counts toward your degree. Uh, the credits count toward your degree. At the same time, along with that, you can also take, for example, let's say data structures, right? It's which is an undergraduate course. It doesn't count toward your degree. So it's a mix and match that we don't necessarily say, oh, you must absolutely take the first of these six courses before you can move on to taking the courses of your program. No, technically you can take any course you want just as long as you have the prerequisite for those courses. Okay, right? thank you. Yeah. Generally, we offer a course like object-oriented analysis and design. The prerequisite for that is data structures. So if you come and you say, oh, I want to take OAD, uh, then we would say, great, uh, do you ha have you taken the waiver examination for data structures? If you say, yes, I've passed it, we say, wonderful, we can allow you to take OAD. And then if you say, no, I haven't taken it, but um, I want to take the course data structures, then we say, okay, you can take data structures, but we will not allow you to take OAD because you do not satisfy the prerequisite. So you can take a course any course, just as long as you have the prerequisite. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. you know, we have examination for the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Any, any other questions? I do have one, actually. Yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, what about students, let's say, who are willing to study and work at the same time, and if they have the chance to have the courses extended? at about three or four years, I'm not sure. What are the qualifications? So I was, that's actually, I, I wanted to talk about the program before I actually go into, into that. But since you've asked, I can talk about that a little bit now. Um, so we do have students uh, 
quite many of them who work and study at the same time. So, and they are able to balance it out. Some are able to do it full-time both. Some are able to do part-time work, full-time studies or vice versa, part-time studies, full-time work, right? Um, so this actually depends, I think it's an individual thing. So I think it depends on each person, how you handle that. But in the, for the program, what you have, we have the flexibility that students can study part-time or full-time. And you can switch between these two states, part-time and full-time from one semester to the other. So for example, let's say this coming fall, you have a huge project at your workplace that you're working on and you know that you just really do not have that time to take a lot, a lot of uh, that many courses, then you can say, you know what, this fall I'm gonna study part-time. And then comes the spring semester and you say, okay, I'm done with my, that big project that I had at work. My, I'm a bit more free. I can, uh, I can dedicate more time to my studies. I'm gonna try to go full-time. So from the spring, you can switch to full-time and so on. So at each semester, you can switch between these two states if you wish. That's, um, that's your freedom. Just, uh, so just note that in such a case, from full-time to part-time and part-time to full-time, you will, not, if you're a part-time student, you will not be considered for scholarship, right? So if, uh, you, we only give scholarships to uh, full-time students. So that's the downside of that. Um, and also note that part-time studies is considered uh, up to six credits. So if each course, for example, is three credits, then you can take two courses. That's a total of six credits. And full-time studies is from nine credits to 15 credits. Again, if each course is three credits, then you're looking at three, three to five courses for a full-time. And for full-time studies here, uh, you're actually paying by the semester. So that means if, you pay, if you're a full-time student, if, you, if you're taking three courses, it's full-time, four courses is full-time, five courses is full-time, you're actually paying the same amount. Doesn't matter which one you take. And in, uh, in the scholarship, you mean the financial aid exactly? Right. Yeah. And uh, let's see, uh, I mean, if a person takes it extended, as you said, as a part time, it's the same, uh, it's the same payment as it is for the full time, if it was in three years or three or, or uh, more. Can I go ahead? Can I ask you to uh, restate that again? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the, I mean, the payments of the courses, if it was the credit, uh, it doesn't matter if you're completing it in two years or three, it's the same payment as always, right? Okay. So in payment. Uh, so full-time you're paying by the semester, part-time you're paying by the credit. Oh, okay. Makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Full-time you're paying by the semester. So full-time, if you registered three courses, you'd be paying that same amount. So if you can take more courses, the better it is for you. Part-time you're paying by the credit. And again, we have no, in terms of, uh, I think I roughly heard about uh, how many years you graduate, something like that. I wasn't quite sure about the question, but just to tell you, we do not have a restriction on how many years it's going to take you to uh, finish the program. We have students who have studied part-time from the very beginning and they're still continuing part-time, right? So obviously if you start part-time and you continue in part-time, it's going to take you a bit longer to finish. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks a lot. Anytime, anytime. Um, any other questions that I can answer at this moment? Okay, so now going back to uh, the bridge courses, are those the requirements for those, are those okay? Okay. Um, I think at this moment, Ruth, can you remind me? I think at this moment I've said everything that there is about to say uh, that there is to say about the program. Right. Um, if you don't have any more questions regarding the uh, the specifics of this, uh, there are a few things that I like to tell you of how we handle things um, in terms of how we try to connect students to the industry. So during the two year studies that we have. Uh, Remember I said there are core courses, there are mandatory courses. So two of these courses are capstone courses. So uh, in Armenian, that's what we call diploma in Ashkata, right? So one of them is capstone preparation. Both of them are mandatory courses. One of them is capstone preparation. The other one is uh, you have a choice to choose between a thesis or a practicum. 
So a thesis, it's uh, you're working with one of our faculty or maybe a couple of our faculties, uh, faculty members, you're working on a specific problem, you're writing a thesis about it, maybe you're doing experiments, maybe it's theoretical work, maybe both. Um, so, and then you're defending that thesis in front of a committee. So that's the capstone thesis. And then we have something that we call a capstone practicum. So if a thesis is not of interest to you, you're more interested in the practicum because you're inclined to uh, go and continue in, uh, working in the industry, then maybe the practicum is better for you. So the practicum is uh, doing a project at a company, right? Uh, they give you a project that's entirely you that's working on it, or maybe you're working with someone else, but there, there are parts of that project that are specifically your tasks. And you learn something new. In other words, you, you learn uh, maybe new concepts, you learn new tools, new programming uh, language maybe that you would be using, or you learn how to put all the knowledge that you've learned uh, in, the other, in the courses that you've taken, put it all together, make this project become into one. So this capstone practicum, how we, uh, now some students uh, already, you know, find the company that they want to work in, uh, that they want to do their capstone practicum in, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, but then there are students who may not necessarily uh, know where to go, how to find this company. So what we do generally is that when the time comes for students to register for this course, um, we have uh, specifically uh, representatives from the industry come and present projects that are specifically tailored for our students uh, to uh, see if there are students in our programs that are interested in working on those projects with them. So as a result, the students get in touch with uh, Become, uh, become in touch with uh, the industry members. And if your work is done well, uh, if the, you know, these representatives from the industry are happy with what you have done, then you might have a possibility of continuing uh, to work for them, right? So there is that possibility of putting you in, uh, in touch with the industry. And of course we have uh, also uh, Epic, which is uh, running our incubator program. So if, you know, anyone who's interested in doing startups, it's, uh, it's a good place to start. So there are, uh, along the way, there are uh, ways for us to put you in touch with the industry if that is something uh, that you're more inclined to. I think uh, at this point, I've given you the gist of everything. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask regarding the program, regarding anything that you want to know, regarding maybe courses, details, anything that is of interest. I'm ready to answer. Um, do you guys have an idea what kind of um, courses you would be looking at while coming to CIS? Yeah, or, and also I should ask, do you have an idea of what you want to, uh, what field of uh, computer science specifically you would like to uh, go into? In other words, do you want to specifically go, I don't know, in the field of machine learning or do you want to go into security or do you guys have any idea? There's no wrong answer here. I'm just curious. Well, it depends on a person. It's it's sometimes uh, different for everybody. They might have the, uh, they might not have the ability to choose at it at the moment. Let's say, uh, especially for people like me. Let's say who are graduating is uh, at the moment. Let's say so. Uh, personally, I don't, but uh, I have some ideas. I'm not sure yet, but. Okay. Uh, well, actually, the good news is you don't have to choose at the very beginning. When you come in, you don't have to choose and say, oh, you know what, this is the concentration that I want. So that's why we uh, generally, when new students come in, we, most of the time they take core courses initially. So to, uh, and the core courses that we have, they are from uh, different concentrations. Uh, they're specifically chosen that way. They're targeted that way. So as a result, students get a chance to uh, understand a little bit about each concentration and see what they like most and gives them uh, the opportunity to pick and choose uh, 
the concentrations that come uh, in later semesters. So you don't have to choose at the very beginning. That's totally fine. But our courses mostly are targeted, different courses are different. There are courses that are uh, very much exam oriented. Uh, we have courses that are very project oriented. We have courses that are both. So it's uh, each one offers a different variety. Uh, um, if you don't have any questions about the program, then if you have questions about admissions, uh, Garin is here, I think. Yes, let's see here. Garin is here if you have any questions regarding the admission process. Or Garin, I don't know, do you want to go through a presentation for them? You're muted, we can't hear you. You are muted. Garin, Garin, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. Yes, uh, Louisa Jad, I will uh, quickly go over our admissions webpage so that even later they may uh, still have questions so that know uh, where to find the answers uh, to their, their questions. So I'll quickly share my screen with you now. So we have, if you go to admissions.aua.am, uh, then you go to graduate because you are applying for a graduate uh, degree program. And we have here several sections. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, your CIS program, you go to this section and you can also find here all the go, uh, course descriptions here. But uh, now I, I will uh, walk you through our application requirements uh, section of admissions page. Uh, first of all, you will need to submit an online application uh, through im.aua.am. Uh, you need to create a profile first and then uh, start completing your application. I have already my account, so I log in. And uh, you all you need to do is to start your application for admission to graduate study. Then uh, you need to submit a uh, proof of uh, English language proficiency, either through TOEFL IBT and their home, uh, it's home edition test, IELTS academic, English language proficiency test waiver. Uh, you can find uh, the details uh, if you are eligible for the test waiver, if you read our policy, and uh, you will need to submit a separate application for this. Then we have for fall 2021, we have this internal assessment. Those of you who may want to apply next year, please uh, uh, come to our admissions webpage and read the details, uh, read the updates, because uh, for next year, we may, uh, we may or we, we may not have this internal assessment. Uh, your English, uh, through this uh, assessment, your English proficiency uh, will be checked during an extended interview. And the program may give you an additional written uh, assignment. Uh, however, when it comes to competition, uh, if you meet uh, the general admissions requirements and the program specific admissions requirements, uh, other than uh, English proficiency, those who take the TOEFL IBT, IELTS or receive a waiver, have a preference over those who take the internal assessment. And if you take the test, make sure that you insert our institution codes so that we receive your official score report on time. Uh, the other uh, required uh, test uh, for CIS admission is the GRE GMAT test. For our admissions purposes, we take into consideration only the quantitative section of this test. However, it is advisable for you to take the whole test because they are valid for five years and we, you may need uh, the test uh, score report uh, for your uh, future PhD or uh, for other purposes. But for our admissions purpose, uh, purposes, we take into consideration only the quantitative section. Uh, if you are an AUA graduate, you may apply for a GRE GMAT waiver. Uh, go to the section that uh, applies to you and see if you are eligible. If you are eligible, then uh, you send us an email uh, along with your transcript uh, attachment. Uh, again, uh, we have this internal assessment for this uh, fall 2021 admission cycle. And uh, again, uh, when it comes to competition, those who have uh, who take the GRE uh, GMAT test have preference over those who take the internal assessment. And in order to take uh, this internal assessment, you need to download the form. Uh, you can download the form from here, complete and attach it to your application. Uh, furtherly, your math and statistical concepts will be assessed during an extended interview. 
Uh, and if you take the GRE GMAT test, again, I put our institution close that we receive your official score report on time. You will need to submit recommendation letters. You can download the form from here. You can also download the form from your application. And the recommendation letter should come directly from your recommenders. Uh, CV, passport, photo, non-refundable application fee. The, the fee is different for Armenian citizens, those who have special passport holders, uh, passports, and uh, Lebanese citizens. And the, uh, uh, the application fee is different for international citizens. And the application fee is different for early and regular. It is 50,000 drums. And for rolling admission, it is 25,000 drums. Proof of undergraduate degree or equivalent. Those of you who are currently studying in your final year of uh, studies, uh, you will need to submit uh, an official letter of standing from your university confirming that you are currently studying there along with the uh, date of your graduation, uh, as well as your transcript, all the courses that you have taken and the grades that you have received. Uh, those uh, of you who are graduates, uh, you will need to submit your diploma and transcript. Additional information about relevant work experience, the program does not require wor work experience and uh, about uh, other uh, requirements and educational requirements for the CIS uh, admission, you can find over here. Now I will go to the uh, selection process and talk about the target scores. Uh, we have uh, target scores uh, both for the TOEFL IBT, this is 79 and 6.5 for the IELTS academic. This score is not that high, so it is always uh, in car, uh, uh, advisable for you to score much higher. And the percentile score for the GRG mod for CIS applicants is 50 percentile. And again, it is highly advisable for you to score much higher than the target scores. And we have an automatic denial threshold for the TOEFL IBT. This is 67 and 5.5 for the IELTS academic. Uh, uh, this means that you have a problem with your English proficiency, so you will need to work harder and maybe apply next year or for this year, for fall 2021, uh, you can still uh, take advantage and uh, take the internal assessment. Uh, and also, I would uh, like to go over the deadline dates. Um, the first deadline date is over. Uh, the regular admission deadline date is April 15, and the rolling admission deadline date is June 15. Uh, we always encourage our applicants to apply either by the early or regular admission deadline dates because uh, spaces for in, uh, during the rolling admission cycle is limited, the same for tuition assistance. The finance is limited, so uh, we always encourage you to apply by the early or regular admission deadline date. To apply by the deadline date means that you will need to submit a complete application package and uh, take uh, the required tests. It's not required that we receive your score reports by that time, but uh, it is um, uh, mandatory that you take the test by the deadline, by your own the deadline date. You can go over our frequent, uh, frequently asked questions later on. Uh, you will find a, a lot of uh, uh, the answers to many of your questions here. And I will quickly talk about the open classes because uh, these classes are free and a good opportunity for you to sample our classes, to see how professors lead the uh, class, how students participate, but make sure that you send your request uh, to open class at a, 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 uh, aua.am uh, during regular classes, because if you send your request during midterm or final exam period, we will uh, definitely not allow you in because you will uh, disturb the uh, exam. Uh, but uh, if it is a regular uh, class period, definitely uh, we will confirm with the program and send you an email that you can uh, participate. Uh, if you, uh, since you are interested in the computer and information science program, we go to this section. And uh, for example, if you are interested in entrepreneurship course, you see that uh, the program is offered the dates and the time period. Uh, when you send us your request, you need to put uh, the uh, course name, uh, the date when you would like to attend the class, and the time period and the, uh, and the uh, is professor's name. And also make sure that you receive a confirmation with us and we will share the link with you uh, through the email. This much from my side, uh, I will stop here and I'm ready to answer your uh, uh, admissions related questions.
Uh, can I ask one? Yes, sure. So I noticed actually a point in the application requirements where it was writing uh, two recommendation letters, except from the university letter. Uh, it, can is be, it, can be, it can be either from your uh, university or your workplace. And uh, should be written on our form. And even if the workplace is not uh, does not have any connections with the uh, with the department, let's say, or the uh, it is uh, always preferably to bring something from a, a workplace related to your program of interest. In, but if uh, it is not, it's okay. There is no such requirement that it should be uh, from the uh, from the program related work experience place. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question, please. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, do AA students need to uh, take the TOEFL test or the GRE? Uh, actually, uh, when I shared my screen and went over application requirements point to B, uh, there are specific requirements uh, and you will need to see if you uh, meet them. And if you meet those requirements, uh, that you will send us an email uh, with a request for a waiver. We will uh, check this with the program and reply you back. If you receive a waiver, then there is no need to take the GRE test or the internal assessment. Yeah, okay, understood. Thank you. Uh, one more question, if I have the time, please. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I like four years ago, I also applied for the bachelor's degree. Uh, it, it didn't go uh, well, let's say, but uh, during the application of the bachelor's degree, there was a field where you can also uh, add some, let's say, volunteers or any other papers that uh, show how to see you are. Is that also uh, included in this uh, part of the degree or let's say? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a separate section for work experience. And if you have some uh, volunteer experience or uh, uh, when uh, or have gone uh, some trainings, you will need to include this in your CV, which should uh, which you should attach to your application. Oh, so there's a CV. Uh, place yes, there is a the CV. Resume requirement. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna check it out. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just later on, uh, go over our application requirements and read the, uh, read all the points in detail. And one more thing that I would like to add here is that uh, if you intend to apply for tuition assistance, uh, make sure that you submit your tuition assistance application within the same deadline that you submit your application for admission. For example, if you intend to apply by the regular admission deadline date of April 15, uh, submit your tuition assistance application by that deadline. Uh, if you apply for uh, admission by the regular admission deadline and decide to submit your tuition assistance application within the Rolling Admission School, your tuition assistance application will not be reviewed. So take this into account. And can we have some information about the application of the uh, assistance? Let's say, where is it exactly on the website? Uh, application fee, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I will share my screen again with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, if you go to admissions.aua.am, then go to graduate, then go to application requirements, read more. English proficiency, uh, GRE GMAT test, waiver, internal assessment. No, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I actually meant about the tuition fees application. Oh, okay, tuition fees. I saw it before there, yeah, so I can, I can imagine that. Okay, we have a separate section for tuition and fees. I'll read more, and then uh, we go to um, the program uh, you intend to apply for, uh, CIS computer information science. And here you can find the annual tuition fee. Uh, it is different for citizens of the Republic of Armenia, those who have a special residency, 10 year residency, and those for international students. 
And also the program chair talked about the non-degree option. Uh, if you intend to apply uh, as a non-degree student, uh, uh, know that uh, you will need to pay per credit. And you can find more information about the non-degree studies if you go and review this section, non-degree studies. Any other questions for Gardiner regarding admissions? Um, while uh, Gardiner was going over the deadlines for the, app the application deadline, something came to my mind that I feel that I should share with you. Uh, so like she said, the early admissions deadline has already passed, but uh, the regular admission deadline is April 15, and then we have the rolling admissions that's much later. So for those of you that do come from uh, different uh, backgrounds other than CS, in other words, where these bridge courses are mandatory courses for you, which you must take, uh, we offer some of these courses in the, in the summer semester. So note that if you, if you are very much interested in uh, studying the CIS and you want, to, uh, you want to continue with our program, then I would recommend that you would uh, apply by the regular admissions, not the rolling admissions, because uh, if you apply by the regular admissions, then by then you have a chance of getting your answers back from the admissions office before the summer semester starts. So as a result, you might be able to take these summer courses, uh, which will speed up your uh, studying process. So if you apply by the rolling admissions, the late admissions, then we would have no chance of admitting you in any of the summer courses because by the time you receive your answers from admissions, the semester would be well on its way. So the summer semester for your information starts at the beginning of June. Okay, so that's something that uh, you should keep in mind. Do you guys have any other questions for us, whether for Garine or for myself, anything that we could answer? No. Um, Armine, will you follow up with everyone? Uh, with, you know, they send them the websites, the information, so that they can uh, uh, sure. they can check everything out, uh, all the information that they were told today. Of course. Uh, and if all of you, if you have any questions later on while you're applying, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, at CIC. So whether it's through Armine or directly to myself or Rubina. Uh, please do not hesitate. So if, if you have questions, please do not be shy, ask away. Uh, if not, then... Um, and maybe briefly we could uh, also give information about um, ISM. Uh, we are holding another open house, which is on uh, March uh, 4th at uh, 6 at 4.30. Uh, and uh, if you are interested, uh, I would like to send you the link uh, to that event as well. And I think Rubina will uh, introduce the program more specifically. Uh, what will it be about exactly? It so, is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have at the faculty of CSE, we have two master's programs. So one of them is the CIS. This is the program that we were presenting today. The other one is ISM. So for example, in the CIS program, we have a data science concentration, right? So if anyone who's interested in learning more about data science, they go into the, they take concentration courses toward the, the, uh, toward the data science field. Um, so, but you see there are different aspects of data science. So there's data science where you tackle that specifically from the code perspective. Uh, that's a lot of coding, it's machine learning, artificial intelligence and, uh, you know, data visualization, all of that. It's, it's very computer science. It's very, uh, it's very heavy, so to speak. So, however, there's a second, uh, there, there's another perspective of data science, which is data analytics, so to speak, where you have the data and you're analyzing that data. So if you're interested mostly in data analytics, then uh, I would highly, highly recommend for you to go to the ISM uh, open house that Armin has said is on March 4th, 4.30. Uh, because it's that the ISM program is much more oriented to 
word the, right? But if you're more interested in, uh, you know, doing hard coding uh, and you want to concentrate in completely computer science, heavy computer science, then uh, CIS might be a better option for you. So it's again, depending what you want. So if you're interested in data science, if you're interested purely in data analytics or mostly in data analytics, then I would highly recommend for you to go to the ISM program because that might be better tailored for your needs. Rubin, do you have anything to add? Okay, thank you. No, I get nothing. Uh, there are other concentrations in, in um, industrial engineering and systems management program which are uh, referred to logistics and uh, sustainable energy, sustainable management. So um, uh, for those people who, are, who do not have a strong background in computer science or uh, programming specifically and mathematics, uh, you may attend this open house. Maybe you will find something interesting for you. That's it from my side. Wonderful, thank you. So in other words, guys, you have nothing to lose by attending. If that's if you want to uh, uh, look at different uh, uh, other possibilities for yourself in the College of PSC. And then see which one is better suited for yourself. Any, any questions? Uh, I know that some of you are from business background and probably this um, master's program will be more interesting uh, for you. All right. If and, there... and just a notification that I shared those links that I went through and our contact information in the chat room so that applicants can copy paste and later refer to uh, as needed. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Karin Ajahn. I see it. Fantastic. Um, if there are no more questions, then uh, that's it. Again, you know how to reach us, uh, either through our email or reach us directly. Uh, either is fine. Uh, it was nice to meet all of you. And um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see you in the faculty of CSC. Well, let's hope so. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.